Welcome everyone, this is Stephen from Stephen Woodward Ministries, and the teaching that I'm going to do is called Creative Power. So let's get right into the scriptures here. So the first scripture that I have is Proverbs 23, 7. And it says, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. He says to you, eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. So the first thing that we have to realize, for the creative power to come out, it has to come from the heart. And that's where everything starts is in the heart of man, okay? So as you think within yourself, that's what you're going to become, okay? So let's take a little uh, a look here. Let's go a little bit more deeper into this scripture. I know we've quoted this many times for as a man thinks, so is he, and we, we say this a lot, but do we understand exactly what it means? So let's look at what it means by he thinks in Hebrew. It's number 8176. And in the Strong's Concordance, it says a primitive root to split or open. It literally, but not, but only as denominative from shahar to act as a gatekeeper to estimate or think. So when you when it says that he thinks, it's acting as a gatekeeper. It's something that's being opened or split open. So when you're thinking, something is being split and opened, and a gatekeeper. It's a gatekeeper, okay? It's pretty cool how you, if you think about it, that every time you think, it's like opening a gate. And whatever goes in and out of there, right, is what you're thinking. So let's look at the part where it says, in his heart, from Hebrew, it's 5315. The definition is a soul, a living being, life, self, person, desire, passion, appetite, emotion, so that's where like the love, the peace, the compassion comes from, right? So that's in your heart. That's your soul is your heart. It's the heart of man. And so what I have here is that as a man lets things in his heart through the gate, so he will be those things. So whatever you let to come through your gate, which is the heart of man, right? That's what you're going to think on. Okay, that's what you're going to become. You're going to become whatever you think on. And so I have here, what you perceive as truth will change your desires. Okay. So whatever you allow through the gate, whatever you think on that you allow to penetrate into your heart is what and who you're going to become. So if you are meditating on truth and you're allowing the truth to come through the gate, right? And it's like a seed that goes into the soil, okay, and gets planted in your heart. Whatever gets planted in your heart is what you're going to think on, and that's how you're going to become, okay? So an interesting thing here. So you have a spirit, okay, and that's joined with Christ. That's the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that's in you. And then you have a body, and your body is flesh, right? And that was killed on the cross those desires of that flesh are gone they're dead okay but you have a heart in the middle you have the soul okay and the soul is what's going to dictate what you believe so if your spirit and your soul are in agreement you're going to get truth if your soul and your flesh are in agreement you're going to get death okay you're going to get the lie okay so when you hear the bad report from the physician and your emotions and your flesh all agree together and they walk together, you're going to get that fruit. OK, if you're if the spirit of truth, right, which is Christ in you and that's the Holy Spirit and that comes in agreement with your soul, then you will get truth. OK, you'll get the kingdom. Right. So two of the three that agree is what you're going to get. That's the outcome that's going to happen. OK, so let's look at this next scripture that I have here. Matthew 12, 34. You you brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak what is good for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart? So here's Jesus talking to the Pharisees and he's calling them a brood of vipers. Okay, 
because what's in their heart is not good because they're speaking evil. He's saying that you're evil. Why? Because their hearts are evil. And he's saying you can't even speak good. How can you speak good? Right? So I'll get back to this in a second, but let's look at the next scripture. Um, Matthew 12, 35 says the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil brings out of his evil treasures what is evil. Okay. So what is the treasure? The treasure is the heart of man. So whatever you bring out of your treasure, whatever you bring out of your heart is what you're going to get, right? The good man brings out good treasure, which is good. The evil man brings out evil treasure out of his heart, okay? So Matthew 12, 36, but I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. So every careless word that you speak, right, you're going to have to give an account for that because these words are creative. Your words are, have creative power. And so you're going to have to give an account for the words that you're speaking that are careless, right? If you're calling people names, if you're calling um, things um, that are untrue, if you're speaking lies, you're going to have to be accountable for those careless words that you're speaking because you're speaking death. You're not speaking the truth over people. Or even in your situation, if you're speaking, you know, I'm so depressed. I'm, you know, I'm so um, anxious all the time. I don't know what's going on. When you're speaking those careless words that you're saying, I am depressed, you're, you're claiming that as part of your identity and you're claiming that as part of who you are, right? That's a careless word. The truth is that you are more than a conqueror, right? Because you're in Christ. You're complete in him. So let's look at the next scripture here. It says, Matthew 12, 37, it says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So a same, so a, a same thing here, that whatever you're speaking, you're either going to be justified or condemned by what you're speaking. And why is that? That's because your words have power. Okay? They have creative power. Whatever you're speaking that comes out of the heart of man is creative. And I want to go back to Matthew 12, 34 here. Where it calls them, um, you brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Okay, so again, whatever is still in the heart is what's going to come out of your mouth. But I want to point out the fact that he called them a brood of vipers. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we might just think, well, he just called them a bunch of snakes, you know, backbiters, whatever. Um, but let's look at what that actually means. The word brood in Greek is actually offspring, child, fruit, and generation. So he is calling them the offspring of the vipers, right? He's calling them children of the vipers. So what does the vipers mean? This is interesting. It says here, of vipers, which is 2191, properly it's a poisonous snake, right? We understand that. But figuratively, it says that incisive words that deliver deadly venom with the use of blasphemy. Now, incisive is your logic. It's Those are logical words, right? Those are carnal words. So it's, he's calling them children of children and offspring, right, who use, who deliver deadly venom by their words, right? It's not just they're just they're just. Um, you know, Pharisees and they're under the law, but he's telling them, look, you guys are the generation. You're the children of deadly, venomous vipers because of what you speak with the use of blasphemy. Like, you really can't get much worse than that if you're speaking logical words or incisive words that deliver deadly venom. He was really, um, talking to them in uh, not a very good way. He's letting them know, look, you guys are very, uh, what comes out of your mouth is poisonous, right? But let's look at this next piece here in uh, the concordance. It says, this switches the bitter for the sweet, light for darkness. It's 2191, which is viper then suggest the venomous desire to reverse what is true for what is false. 
So they were reversing what was true for what was false. They were they were reversing the um, the law, right? They were using the law and they were reversing it. You understand? Because the truth was not in them. So they were reversing it. They were on the reverse end of, of the spectrum here, right? They were not walking in, and obviously Christ had not been crucified yet, but they were not walking in love. They were walking as a viper. They were, they were reversing what was true for what was false. They were switching love for what was evil. And they didn't even know it, right? So the question is, is how do we change our heart? Because you obviously want to change your heart because, again, what I just uh, spoke about here is that whatever's in your heart will come out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth is going to create um, your reality, right? It's creative. So you want to have, you know, what's good. What, what's the scripture here? Um, Matthew 12, 35, the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. So you want to have good treasure in your heart. You want to have good treasure so that you bring forth good treasure. So how do we change our heart? So the first scripture I have here is Ephesians 4.22. That in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. So the first thing that you need to do is recognize that your former manner of life, that's the former life, that's not you anymore. You lay aside the old self. That's the old man that was crucified on the cross with Christ. He's dead, he's gone. You have to choose. You have to choose to lay him aside. You have to choose to put him off and not pick him up and carry him around and be him anymore, okay? The next scripture I have is John 20, 29. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who do not see and yet believe. So he's saying here that because you've seen him, you believe him. But blessed are those who have never seen him, but yet they still believe. So the first thing that you have to do is put off the old man, right? If you're not born again, you obviously have to be born again first to have the new creation inside of you and have the old man cast off and um, be crucified. But then you have to believe. You have to believe in Jesus, whether you see him or not, and you have to believe in what you do not see. Okay? So the next scripture here that I have is Ephesians 5.1. And so we have to be imitators of God. Okay? That's the next way to, to change your heart. So you put off the old man, you believe in the word, you believe what Jesus is saying, you believe what he's teaching, and then you imitate God. You imitate him as a child, right? As beloved children. So just like you would imitate your, your, your mother, your father, your, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, whoever was in your life, as you would imitate them, you now imitate God. So you have to seek out the word, search the word to see who you are now and live that out, no matter how you feel, okay? It's walking out the life of Christ, right? So be an imitator of God. Imitate him and character in his nature, okay? It's not just um, in deeds only, but the way that you carry yourself, the way that you, the way that you do things in private, okay? You have to walk a holy life. It's not, to, it's not that you have to walk a holy life to earn anything, but you walk the holy life to honor him and honor his name because he died for you, okay? So you imitate him as beloved children. And let's look at the next scripture here, Luke 2.49. And he said to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? So this is Jesus when he was a young boy and his parents um, had essentially um, left him in the city, and they were headed back um, home. And they had to come back and search around, and they finally found him. And he's he's like, look, didn't you realize that I'm going to be in my father's house? This is like, he, he understood it. He knew that he was imitating his father by being in his father's house. So 
You have to you have to put off the old man, put off the old life. You have to believe in Christ and you have to imitate God and be like a child. OK. And so what I put here is that you must be consistently in your father's house from a child's perspective. OK. So what that means is that you have to come as a child. You have to come in truth and come in faith and come in belief. Right. Like one time I had mentioned to somebody Whenever I would go out to eat with my parents when I was a child, I was never concerned about who was going to pay for the meal. I was a child. I just trusted we were going to go have dinner. I was never concerned about being kicked out of the restaurant because we didn't pay our bill. Right? So you come as a child's perspective. You come trusting. You come with faith and believing that what he's told you is true, that what he's told you is um, honorable. It's pure. It's holy. It's righteous. Right? You honor that. And so let's move on to the next scripture here. The next way that you do it, in Joshua 1.8. Now, this is in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. But it still applies because it says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. So what I want to focus on here is it says that you shall meditate. It shall not depart from where? It shall not depart from your mouth. Okay? But you shall meditate on it day and night. So let's look at the Hebrew word for meditate. But you shall meditate. The Hebrew is 1897. And it says to murmur in pleasure or anger by implication to ponder, imagine, meditate, mourn, mutter, roar, soar, speak, study, talk, or utter. Okay. So what I want you uh, to, to focus on here is that it says to ponder, to imagine and meditate. Okay. You want to ponder the word. You want to imagine the word. If you are sick in your body, you want to imagine yourself healed, right? You shall meditate on the word. You meditate on truth. You meditate on what is truth. And that is what changes the heart, okay? Put off the old man. Believe in Jesus, right? Imitate God as a child. Come to him like a child, right, from a child's perspective. And then meditate and imagine the things of the word. Imagine the things of God, okay? Ponder them, and it says to do it day and night, okay? That means all the time. You should always be pondering the word of God, okay? You should always, as you read the scriptures, when you read the scriptures and you read a story in the Bible, imagine it. Let it come to life in your heart. That way, as you're reading it, it will come alive along with the word of God, which is alive, right? And you'll see that truth. You'll see it as your reality, okay? So like if you're if you're uh, reading David and Goliath, imagine David and Goliath. Imagine the fight. Imagine what it felt like, the heat. Imagine what it felt like, what it smelled like. Maybe it smelled like grass. Maybe it smelled like a brook or some water nearby. You know, imagine that as you're reading those scriptures, let them come alive to you as they are alive on the inside, right? The next scripture I have here, and we know this scripture, and I'm not going to get in too deep into this. I, I have uh, another teaching called the carnal reality that goes into greater detail of the scripture. Um and it's Romans 12, 2, and it says, and do not be conformed to this world. So don't conform yourself to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So what I want you to understand here is renewing the mind is not you pounding scriptures into your brain until it changes. Okay. Romans 8, 7 says that the, um, the carnal mind is against God and it always will be. Your flesh and blood will never inherit the kingdom. So this is not talking about forcing your brain to conform based on scriptures. 
What this is talking about is being transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind is the mind of Christ inside of you. It's, it's renewing the heart. Okay, it's renewing the heart on the inside of you to come into agreement with truth. Okay, like I said earlier, when the spirit of truth and the heart of man comes into agreement, you're going to get the truth. You're going to get what's what's coming out of the, the spirit. So the renew of the mind is not your physical brain. Okay, so let's look at the next part here. The word is alive in you. Okay, so now that you've understood what's in the heart okay and we we have now learned how to change the heart now that we've changed the heart now the word is alive in you okay and so let's look at the next scripture here romans 10 8 it says but what does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we are preaching so notice here that it's talking that the word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. So the word is in your heart. Okay. The treasure is in your heart. That's your heart. So the word is in the treasure box, which is in your heart. And that's what they were preaching. They were preaching the word of faith. They were preaching the word to believe in Christ. And then he was saying that the word that Christ is near you. He's in your mouth. He's in your heart. Okay. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, okay? So that the word that is near you, the word that is in your mouth and in your heart, is Jesus, because he is the word, and he was from the very beginning, okay? So that is the word, and he is alive in you, okay? We're not talking about the word as in paper, ink in a book. We're talking about the living word. We're talking about the life of Christ that is in you. So let's look at Amos 3.3 3 here. It says in the NIV version, it says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. So part of this, the word that is alive in you, you have to, you have to make the choice to walk together in unity with Christ. Okay. The word is in you. But you have to choose to believe it. You have to choose to put off the old man, right? You have to choose to become a child, and you have to choose to come into agreement. Like I mentioned just a minute ago, you have to have the soul and the spirit come into agreement and walk together, right? The flesh is, the flesh is dead, okay? And the flesh is never going to agree. So we want to have the soul and the spirit walk together. And you have to agree to do that. Now, Jesus is always in agreement to walk with you. But you have to make the choice to agree with him. You have to agree with Christ. You have to agree with the spirit of truth. If you come into agreement with the flesh, you will not be walking together in unity with Christ. Okay, you'll be walking in unity in the laws of sin and death and in the flesh. We don't want to do that. Okay. So the last scripture here that I have for this section is Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. And that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Now, this is the other half of Ephesians 4, 22, where it says to put off the old man. And these two scriptures are bombshells. If you read it clearly, it says that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So you, you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and your soul. You have to be re renewed, right? We've been talking about that. And it says, and put on the new self. So you have to choose to put off the old man, renew what's inside and put on the new. And those are choices. You have to choose to put on the new creation in Christ. When you wake up and you feel depressed and you feel lonely and you feel, um, you know, angry, you have to put off the old man and you have to say, no, I'm not depressed. I'm not angry. I'm more than a conqueror. And you have to choose those words. You have to choose that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you have to choose to believe that whether you feel like it or not. 
And you have to speak and choose those words wisely. Because remember, every careless word that you speak, you'll have to account for those. So you have to put on the new self. You have to choose to put on Christ, okay? Like my shirt says, it's not me, it's Jesus, okay? You have to put him on. You have to choose to put him on. Now, the next part of the scripture, it says, which is, which in the likeness of God, right? So the new creation is in the likeness of God. And it has been. It says it has been created. So it's already been created in God in righteousness and the holiness of the truth. So the new creation in Christ is in the likeness of God, and it's in, it's righteous and holy and pure and true, right? That's a new creation, okay? That's much better than the old man who's, what does it say in the uh, Ephesians 4.22? It says that this one is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, right? We'd rather be in righteousness and holiness, right? Instead of walking in uh, the lust of deceit and being corrupted. So the new creation is in the likeness of God and has been created in the righteousness and holiness of the truth. Okay. So now that you recognize that it's the life of Christ in you, right? That it's the, that God is in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth is in you, right? And the new creation has been created like him. In righteousness and holiness, okay? You have to walk together. You have to recognize that the word is in you. Christ is in you and it's alive, right? It's near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart, okay? And so let's see what it looks like when you're walking in this creative power. The first scripture I have here. Now this is, again, the Old Covenant. 2 Samuel 23, 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. So the Lord spoke by him because his word was on his tongue. Okay? So when you're walking in creative power, God's word will be on your tongue. If you're walking in agreement with Christ, if you're walking in agreement with him, his word will be on your tongue and you will be speaking truth, right? So let's look at the next scripture here. James 2.17 says, Even so faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. Okay, so to walk in creative power, you have to have the word of God on your tongue and you have to have works. Now, when I say works, I don't mean you have to you have to do something to get something. When it when it's talking about works, okay, faith is believing, and works means that you have to agree with it. Your works will prove what you believe. You have to come into agreement and walk out that life. You have to walk out what you believe. Okay. So your faith and your works have to be working together. If you just believe something, but you don't act accordingly, then it's saying that it's dead being by itself. You can't do works or faith separately. They have to be working in conjunction together in order for you to get um, the manifestation of it. Okay. And I think you all understand what works are. Works are not you trying to be good. The works are not reading the Bible three times a day. It's not praying three times a day. It's not fasting. All of that stuff is works. If you're trying to use those things to get something, then those are dead works. Those are works that are not for the kingdom. Okay. There's nothing wrong with fasting, but if you're doing it to get something, okay, fasting is there to honor God. And it's also there so that you can suppress the flesh. That's taken off the old man. When you start fasting, you're taking off the old man. Okay, so let's look at the next scripture. So James 2, 24 and 26, it says, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Okay, so 
I just mentioned this. Let's look at it a little bit more here. So a man is justified by what? But by his works, okay? And not by faith alone. So you can believe all you want, right? Even the demons believe in God, right? But they haven't accepted him as their Lord and Savior. So you have to walk this out. You have to say, I believe, and then act accordingly, okay? If you believe that you're healed, you have to act accordingly, right? If somebody says, how do you feel today? You don't say, well, you know, I, I feel okay. I mean, I was, I still was sick this morning, but this was going on and that was going on. I, I just really feel like this and that. You're, you're speaking out of the old man. You're speaking out of the heart of evil, right? It doesn't matter how you feel. It's not that you're lying. You can say, well, yeah, I, I feel like trash. But in your heart, you say, look, no, this is, this is not who I am, right? I'm healed. By his stripes, I've been healed. My feelings don't matter, okay? So your, your works have to be justified, and it's not by faith alone, okay? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So essentially, again, your works have to be in accordance, in agreement with what you're doing, okay? If you believe you're healed, then you act healed, okay? If you are uh, blessed, then you act blessed, right? Um, if you're more than a conqueror, you have to act like more than a conqueror, right? You have to speak it. I'm not depressed. That's not who I am. I'm more than a conqueror, and I'm going to get up, and I'm not going to think about those thoughts. I'm not going to think about whatever's dragging me down. I'm going to choose to believe that I'm more than a conqueror, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, okay? You, you speak it and you walk it, okay? Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So as you're speaking, when you're saying, I'm more than a conqueror, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you have to hold fast to that confession. You have to allow that to be spoken out of your mouth and hold on to that word. OK, you can't go back and say, oh, well, no, it didn't work. I'm going to maybe I'll try again tomorrow. You have to hold fast at confession without wavering. Now, I have a teaching on wavering. And wavering is a big deal, right? You can't waver a little bit, right? You have to hang in there and stand against the wiles of the enemy and hold fast your confession to truth. Because if your heart and the, the treasure in your heart is good, it's going to have good words coming out of it. You might see your bank account. You might see your relationships. You might see your kids off into a ditch somewhere. But you speak the word. You speak truth, right? I am highly favored, right? I am blessed. All of my needs have already been met by Christ. I don't have to do something to get something. All of my needs are already met. I just choose to believe and trust, right? The next scripture here, Isaiah 55, 11. And this is a, this is a creative, creative power scripture. Isaiah 55, 11, so, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the manner for which I sent it. So this scripture right here is saying very clearly, whatever I'm speaking, it's not going to come back with a different result. Okay? It's not going to return empty. Okay? If I'm speaking for provision, provision is going to come back. It will it will accomplish with um, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the manner for which I sent it. So he sent that. When you speak, you're sending it for a purpose, right? Father, I thank you that my children are serving the Lord. I thank you, Father, that you love them, that nothing can stop your love for them. Lord, I thank you that you are bringing truth to their hearts every day. And you're speaking that out of your heart, not just out of your mind. You're not speaking out of your head, right? You're speaking out of your heart. That's where the treasure is. The treasure comes out, okay? And you speak what is good. You don't speak what is evil. And you don't choose to look. Remember it, when Jesus said in the scripture earlier, he said, blessed are those who have not seen me and believe. So you have to believe in what you cannot see. 
You have to believe that when you're speaking, those creative words are going and they're taking care of what you're speaking. The word says that those words are not empty. Okay. So I have here that words and heart must be in alignment, not words and brain. So essentially what I just said here, the similar thing, is that your words in your heart, what you're speaking out of your heart, right, what you're believing and you're speaking have to be in alignment. They have to be in truth, right? The spirit and the soul have to be in alignment. You have to walk together with Christ, right? You have to come into agreement in your heart with the word, okay? You cannot come into alignment with your words and what's in your head. You can quote scriptures all day long. You can quote by his stripes, I'm healed. You can say that over and over, but if it's not coming out of what you believe and you know, right? There's a difference between believing in your head and believing in your heart. Believing in your in your head is just information that you're just spewing out, okay? It's like you're parroting something, okay? But when you speak out of your heart, that's where the creative power comes from because you're speaking within, okay? You're speaking with the spirit, with the, with the heart of man, with Christ, okay? And that is where the power comes from. When you join yourself with Christ and you speak his truth into those situations, those things are going to change. Okay. And here's what's going to happen. Okay. Here's the last scripture. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you. In the presence of him whom he believed, even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Okay, so what we have here, this is the other scripture that is creative power. Okay, this is Abraham, and he believed God, right? And it says, even God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Okay, now it talks about God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. But let's go back to the scripture here, Ephesians 24, 24. It says, which in the likeness of God. So you are created in the likeness of God. Okay. You have his creative power in you. You have his nature. You have his character. You have his desires. Right. Once you're born again, all those desires of the world, just you may still want them, but the desire is gone because the new creation in Christ is created in the likeness of God. And you don't bring all that trash from the old man into the new man. Okay, You're created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So you can call those things into being that which do not exist. So. For the children that are off into the ditch and they're not believing, okay? You can call those things into being. You speak life into them. Like I just mentioned, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're drawing them to you with truth. I thank you, Father, that you're surrounding them with people that are Christians. I thank you, Father, that the people that they're coming in contact with um, know Jesus, that they're speaking truth. I thank you, Father, that you are, you know, drawing them. Right. You want to ask, you know, you want to believe that God has joined them. You want to speak truth. A lot of times people will pray and ask God, please, God, go get my child. Please, God, go do this. Please, God, go do that. Please. You have to do this, God. My my kid's doing this. My kid's doing that. What do I do, God? You just speak life, speak truth over them. Father, I thank you, Lord, that they are saved, that they are serving the Lord. I thank you, Father, that my child is Holy Spirit filled. Father, I thank you, Lord, that he's he's speaking the word. He's preaching the word. Father, I thank you and see him doing that. Speak that. He comes home. He's a train wreck. You say, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you love him. I thank you, Lord, that he's saved. I thank you. So you don't look at what you see. You look at what you don't see, right? You look at the you look at the kingdom. You look at the, the truth, okay? So I hope you uh, got something out of this. I hope you understand that what comes what's in the heart and comes out the mouth is a creative power. It's creative words. And you're creating a reality when you do that. And you can't waver. You got to stick to your confession, stand on the word and speak the word. And that situation will change. So if anybody has any comments or questions, please put them down below and I will follow up and get back to you. Thanks guys. God bless.